put up in our Paha store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those who fell outside the, uh, the system. <laughs> so anyway, prana is often translated as ilan vital, or life force, um, often translated as breath, uh, in the sense of the bigger word, not just the air that goes in and out of you, but the internal breath. Uh, is a good translation for it. Um, life is a good translation for it. Anyway, but it's, of course, the air that goes in and out of you is what we first refer to when we're talking about prana. And so the, the two primary forms that are used in practice initially, <coughs> prana and apana. So you keep that main term prana, and then it's subdivided into many different forms, but there are five major subdivisions. One of them is called prana, okay, which is confusing. Okay. <laughs> and, so, and it's the form of uh, prana which controls uh, inhaling. And so prana, and, and this, it does this through the five senses, the five sense fields. Okay, so it's not only touch, but it also has a visual, an auditory, a t tactile, um, and, you know, what are the others? Uh, smell and taste. Yeah. Okay. So these are all, and these all connect together. But when it is rising, blossoming like a plant, growing, spreading out from one into the many, starting to interface with other things, that's prana. And that pattern, when you really inhale, the central seat of prana is the middle of your heart. Of course, things don't last. Once you are totally inflated, <coughs> then you enter deflation stage. So that pattern of deflation, or shrinking back, is called apana. And it squeezes things out of the body, but structurally, it takes you from the many back into one. Okay. So even intellectually, when I start to appreciate how many things there are in the world, what a variety of people, of cuisines, what a variety of choices at Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> what vastness. And then I talk to a lot of people, what, so many different stories. You know, it's like, oh my God. And then, what the apana phase of the mind is, I start to categorize them. I take the specifics, the particulars, and I'm able to throw them into packages. Like Whole Foods is just crazy, you know. It's like I get single packages. Oh, you're all just people. I got a people <laughs> package, or a people category. It's all one. Oh, give me that. It's all God. It's all Brahman. It's all Vishnu. All of those are conceptual unities. And the apana does that, and then you're just like, ah. And then the prana messes it up and says, no, yeah, it's all one, but check out how many it is. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a cycle, and each one is inspiring and exciting, but at a certain phase it turns on you. And it's like, ah, and it's scary. And so apana, the, when you're exhaling and squeezing stuff out of your body the, that, that contracts to a seat point which is in the mula or the middle of your pelvic floor okay right in front of the anus um, just immediately in front of the anus above the perineal body that's considered the, the mula and so this is a point of the body that people don't talk about uh, in respectable society <laughs> They come to these fringe places like yoga studios. <laughs> places that have fallen between the cracks. Okay. How do you, you know, how do you categorize yoga as a business? Okay, do you have a business? Do you have a religion? Okay, it's like a refuge. Okay. Um, the government is quite worried about it in some countries. But anyway, upon a contracts to a point. So, the initial stage of yoga practice, and hatha yoga, is you have to unite prana and apana 
In other words, you have to, through meditation practice, through asana, pranayama practice, start to see that they actually are interdependent, and you start to experience them simultaneously, every place, inside and outside the body. Okay. And so this is what the mulabandha is, that forms the pot belly. And so whenever you're inhaling, you feel the roots of the, the contraction patterns that the inhale is then based on. And then whenever you're exhaling, making a contraction pattern, you're feeling the residue, sensually, of the expansion pattern. And it it's, uh, brings you right into the central channel. So what happens is they unite, and they unite, one place where they unite, uh, and this is stage one of Hatha Yoga practice, they unite in the navel, okay? Awakening the Samana Vayu, uh, which is the form of prana which is equalizes stuff and is responsible for the digestive fire, which is not just your ability to digest food, but it's your ability to assimilate or to synthesize. Okay. So not only you know, beans, beans and rice, um, but uh, also information like Zeno's paradoxes, <laughs> which you were looking up. You know, so all of this stuff, you're going, oh, such diversity. Okay. And no, it's all a unit. And you get people who uh, really are biased towards diversity, others towards <coughs> unity, and they don't see that they conceptually, intellectually, it's two ends of the same stick. So once you get, you'll get an intuitive gut belly sense of, yeah, you're the same thing. Mm -hmm. Happy tummy. Okay. <laughs> Samana. And it shines like the sun, so they say. And then, in your yoga practice, and this will happen any time in your yoga practice you want. When you're inhaling, at the top of the inhale, if you have got the pot going, your throat muscles contract scalene muscles. And if your palate releases, meaning your prana and apana are into place, so your palate has nothing to worry about, you'll awaken what's called udana vayu, which goes and that takes, you know, that is allowed, once you have the process of synthesis, then you go the process of eventually suspension of meditation. And so udana, they say, dwells in the throat, but it opens the channel from the heart through the crown of the head. And so the udana is going to give you sensations in your practice of nobility, even though you're not noble. Okay. Okay. And so that's why a lot of people, they run away from yoga, because they'll start to actually get it, they'll start to feel it, and they'll go, oh. and then, then they'll, they'll hear their grandmother in the background going, oh, can't go there, okay. And so we run into cultural barriers and all kinds. So there's a lot of counseling done when you awaken the Udana by you. And then, by the end of the practice, this one Mysore class will do this to you. You awaken, what's it called? Dhyana by you, uh, which they say dwells everywhere. It has no home or no central location, but it's all over the place and you experience it initially as the vibrance of your skin. You know, where any pore of your body could be the center of the universe. Okay. And if you look into any pore, well, there's a whole universe there. And so what this prana does, and it's currently functioning, is it interfaces you, or your organism. <laughs> Excuse me, there's no you. It, in, this organism is interfaced with its environment via dhyana. In other words, one is proprioception. I'm able to like spatially orient myself. Okay, you know. And so it opens a kind of intelligence that allows an interfacing with the environment. Okay. Which is not only good for the environment, it's good for other people too. Okay, so that form of the prana, which is awakened in the practice, it's almost like bathing in a kind of golden 
soap. You know, it's really foamy. It's made of nectar. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, you start to see that everything is an interfacing of a contingent center, or an organism like you, with its environment. And that the real sparkle of the prana, which is joy, is the interfacing for love. So in pranayama, we're actually opening all of these five forms of the prana. And then they say, once you've done that, then the Tabi Joyce say, oh, the rest is all coming, no problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, I uh, hopefully um, this has been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, if you practice, then it gets interesting. So, uh, in spite of the inadequacies of my explanations, my inability to find a turtle for you to sit on, if I've pulled the turtle out from under you, I apologize. But do practice, okay? Uh, And so, when distress comes, or a sense of like anxiety comes, practice. Um, okay, if say you're you're doing yoga and somehow you get mangled doing yoga, keep practicing. Okay, you might want to modify the practice with some intelligence. Okay, <laughs> but it's always like ah, like step and counter step. It's all, all to extreme subtlety. So what we should do is we should chant uh, to take this entire whatever it was and just put it down and then go. (laughs) So we'll do the closing chant. Uh, The closing chant is Swasti Prajabya Paripalaya. Swasti means happy, interfacing. Okay, so the Vyana Vayu is interfacing with all the entire environment. Prajabhya means all entities who are, have taken birth. So everywhere. Uh, Paripalayantam means everywhere. All planets, all levels of you know, everything. All countries. Om Swasti Swasti Prajabhya Next week, too. <laughs> the 